In this clip I will discuss the special properties of rational functions. So what is again a rational function? A rational function is the p of x divided by q of x and p and q are polynomials. So p and q are polynomials which means that I can write f as in a, in, in a numerator, we write p, which is the weighted sum of power functions. So p and a plus a zero, where p and a plus a zero, and the will equal non-zero, so some of the terms may cancel. The same holds for the denominator. So here we have q being a polynomial of degree m. What is the domain of this function? Well, the domain of this function is basically anything that can be substituted for x, which does not cause problems. So basically, we only get problems when the uh, denominator equals 0 or qx equals 0. So the domain is all x is in R for which q of x is unequal to 0. So what are the roots? Well, the roots are just all values of x such that fx equals 0. So these are the zeros of p. And an uh, additional condition additional condition is that the q of x should not be equal to 0. Well, we have a vertical asymptote. Well, we have extraordinary behavior or in a rational function near a vertical asymptote. And this happens if a q of a happens to be 0 and a p of a unequal to 0. So the, the numerator closes in on a specific value unequal to 0 and the denominator equals 0. A horizontal asymptote refined for is, is basically giving a description of how the function behaves for arbitrary large values of x. And when the value f of x is closing in on some specific value y is b, then we call such a thing, uh, this line, a horizontal asymptote. So for uh, polynomials of equal degree, we can easily find that actually the horizontal asymptote equals a n divided by b n. And also if uh, a n, of a d, 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 the degree of p is lower than the degree of the polynomial q, then we find as a horizontal asymptote the value y is zero. Now you may question yourself, you may ask yourself, what happens if the degree of p is actually larger than the degree of q? Consider the following example where fx is the rational function uh, with a p of degree 2 and q of degree 5 as follows. So p equals x squared plus 3x plus 1 and q equals x to the power 5 plus 9, x to the power 4 plus 10. Well, how to find long-term behavior? Well, what we may do is divide by x. Since x is assumed unequal to 0, we, di we may define divide numerator and denominator by x. So if we divide the numerator by x squared, then we get 1 plus 3 divided by x plus 1 over x squared, and the denominator divided by x squared gives x to the power 3 plus 9 x squared plus 10 divided by x squared. So the fractions where there is an x in the denominator well, the, these values vanish. These terms vanish for x arbitrarily large or arbitrarily small. And x to the power 3 plus 9x squared becomes arbitra arbitrarily large. So we have a numerator which becomes arbitrarily large. The denominator goes to 1. So the tendency of values fx is 0 for x moving into plus or minus infinity and especially especially for x going to infinity 
So we may conclude that actually we have a horizontal asymptote y equals 0. So now let's see. This was example 1. Another example where the degree of numerator and denominator are equal. So suppose fx is a rational function where we divide two polynomials of degree 2. So we have this term. Again, we may, if we assume that x is not equal to 0, we divide denominator and numerator both by x squared. This is basically the highest uh, exponent or the highest power in both numerator and denominator. So we get as a numerator 1 plus 3 over x plus 1 over x squared. And as denominator we get 2 plus 2 over x plus 10 over x squared. And now you see that actually yeah, we may do this again since we assume, by only assuming that x is unequal to 0, we may, do, we may divide by x squared. So 3 over x plus 1 over x squared goes to 0 for arbitrary large x or small x. The same holds for 2 over x plus 10 over x squared. So we see that fx tends to the values 1 plus 0 divided by the denominator 2 plus 0 for x going to plus or minus infinity. This only means that when we take x arbitrarily large or small, then the values of x are, have a tendency to go to a half. So in this way, in this fashion, we say, well, horizontal asymptote of fx equals the line y equals a half. Consider the following example of a rational function fx equals x squared plus 1 divided by x squared minus x. Then the graph is given on the left hand side and on the right hand side we see that this equals by factorizing the denominator we see that this function equals x squared plus 1 divided by x divided by x minus 1. So we observe the following. First of all, we see that fx is never equal to 0 since the numerator is e uh, equals x squared plus 1, which never equals 0. So in the picture we see that we have two vertical asymptotes, and the vertical asymptotes we are we can find them by solving x times x minus 1 equals 0. And at the same time, the, the, the numerator should be unequal to 0. But we, showed it, we have shown this already. So we have two vertical asymptotes, one at x equals 0 and one at x is one, equals 1. And just in the same fashion as the former examples, we see that the horizontal asymptotes uh, can, can be easily calculated since here we in the case that numerator and denominator have equal degree so that actually the value y for which we see horizontal asymptote is just the coefficients of both quadratic terms divided on each other so it's 1 divided by 1 so y is 1 equals is it gives uh, an equation for the horizontal asymptote